Hey, what are you wearing? I sure hope it's a bathing suit because I'm about to take you on the wettest ride of your life. <laughs> Quick recap. I bought this jet ski, gutted it, cleaned it, installed some new graphics, built a trailer, and fixed everything. So, what's next? Well, considering that currently, much like you, the jet ski is just an empty shell, I might as well take this opportunity to give the hull some attention. <laughs> when I stripped the old graphics, a faded memory of their former selves remained, which I imagine is how your parents felt after they had, you know, you. Fortunately, the graphics shadow buffed out nicely with the use of rubbing compound and a mediocre Harbor Freight polisher. I was going to make a joke about rubbing compound, but that's low-hanging fruit, which coincidentally is the name of the book your parents gave you when your balls dropped. At 23. Now that the hull looks halfway decent, it's time to cover up my shitty white epoxy patches. I've heard some controversy surrounding these keel guards. They look ugly, they affect handling, they look ugly, but I tend to lean toward function over form, so before you complain about other people's preferences, maybe you should take a step back and then take another one right off that cliff. I mean, what's the harm in extra protection? I'm sure your parents regret not using more. Jesus, what is it with this theme this video? Despite evidence to the contrary, I am a gentleman. At least, that's what your mom told me. Alright, we've got a few more things to deal with before we can start slapping this old girl back together. I've seen people repair pitting and foam using caulk, so I'm trying out this flexible caulk called... You're, you're ready for this? Big Stretch Caulk. It even comes with your very own newborn caulk buddy. You can't make this shit up, folks. I mean, you definitely could, but it's way funnier when it's real. Saves me from having to make a bunch of caulk jokes, anyway. Man, they weren't kidding when they said big stretch. Big stretch, oh yes, big, oh yes, big stretch. Time to try my hand at some upholstering, I guess. So then I said, if you keep it up, I'll have to fit two in my mouth. <laughs> oh, classic. All right, so what we have here is the gummy grab handle. It feels like it's wrapped in old skin and sort of looks like it too, so I tediously scraped all the gumminess off and wrapped it in cotton friction tape. Here I, here I go. Look at, look at me go. He employs a sweet transition to show that he painted the air intake grates, succumbing to the cliches of YouTube editing. It is clear from the slight grimace he perpetually wears on his face that he is ecstatic to finally be reassembling his wet hot speed giraffe. As he cycles through camera angles, he discovers that his latissimus dorsi muscle actually looks pretty damn good in this shot, so he decides to leave it in even though it's a completely useless shot and does an astoundingly poor job showcasing what he's actually doing in there. Fuck, that looks good. He fondly pats the only friend he has, drawing a pitying glance from his neighbor. He embraces the fuel tank as he imagines one wood the body of a woman, which explains a lot. The innuendo of this part here is not lost on him, but my god man, at least treat it to dinner first. I could continue with this weird metaphor I have going here, but I'd prefer not to insult the fair sex by comparing their bodies to a gas tank. After he manhandles the oil tank into place, using that particular verb because it validates his masculinity, he pans over the new baler line so that he has time to finish this sentence. His two supple-as-a-kitten hands work in perfect harmony to install the trim motor, then he expertly maneuvers a section of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe in a half-hearted attempt to explain how he created a custom VTS nut tool by heating up the end of the pipe and pressing it over the nut. He begins to install the exhaust, then discovers that he is, in fact, an idiot, and moves on to the electronics. Speaking of discovering things, I recently discovered that I have a fetish for figuring things out. I just... I just came to that realization.
previous owner installed this battery disconnect switch, which is the only good thing he did for this poor jet ski. Now, based on my very limited electrical knowledge, everything should be plugged in and working, so let's see if I get the two beeps. Sick. After some light tremble sharding, I discovered that the MPEM gets its ground from the stator through this plug, so I ran a ground wire to the battery, then waited to film until my yard was full of girls and dogs. Holy shit, it works. Just the starter motor. As my grandfather used to say, a micro goblin penis is nothing to be ashamed of. Remember that trim fix module I bought? I spliced it into the original VTS wiring harness. How, you ask? Power wires, switch wires, sensor wires, motor wires. Simple as that, you juicy piece of ass. To get the trim gauge working, I ran the trim up to its hard stop, slapped some glue on the sensor, then slid it around on the side of the old VTS enclosure until the gauge registered correctly. Well, that's pretty neat. I'm honestly a bit surprised that everything on the trim system worked first try. I mean, I guess they don't call me the jet ski god for nothing. The last bit of electrical to install is this bilge pump. It's going to be mounted back here, but I'm waiting for the epoxy to cure on that zip tie mount. I wired it into this switch, then into the electrical box where it gets its power from this battery lead and grounds on the common ground post. Fucking sleek, yeah? Well folks, that's pretty much the entire electrical system installed and working. Just gotta tidy up this rat's nest of wires here, and that looks no better. And I don't know how to end videos anymore, so I guess we're done here. <laughs>